What's going on everyone, Desktops Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, by a vote of you guys over on Instagram, since we put up a poll there, you guys were voting on what product you'd like to see next that we had on hand. We'll be taking a look at the EZDI Fab vertical GPU mount today. It's got a little bit of RGB flare and it should help alleviate some issues of uh, not having enough spacing with typical vertical mounts in some cases on the market. Uh, so we have it all already kind of pre-assembled here. We'll get some close up to show you uh, how this goes in and how the card looks with it on there. Today we're using it in my main system uh, with the EVGA XC3 Ultra here. It's a 3070 card that I was lucky to get my hands on. We'll be putting this in the main rig today. So let's dive into it. All right, so just to go over a few main components that uh, the kit comes with, you can see I already kind of have the bracket set up here. You have your main PCIe slot with its normal lever here to load and unload the card. It has its RGB header here and it lights this little white opaque bar here at the bottom. And it comes with a couple different mounting options. Uh, you have the bracket here that mounts to the side that'll actually take over the horizontal slots and turn them vertical and then you can mount the plate here that actually attaches to those on the front or back side of it, so depending on which way it needs to go in the case. Uh, so it makes it pretty easy. Uh, now this one is PCIe Gen 3 only, so we'll have to probably change some settings in the motherboard today since we do have a B550 motherboard. It kind of defaults to Gen 4, but like I said, I believe this riser is only rated for Gen 3, so we'll have to change that out and check that out today. Then we'll be doing some thermal tests as well to see if the card performs well in vertical orientation, which it should, because uh, that's the main reason I like these vertical brackets like this, since they do pull the card away from the glass. Like I said, that is the biggest uh, hindrance you have on cases set up like this, because this P120 crystal uh, that I use does have a vertical mounted slot on it already that comes on the, built on the case, uh, but it's so close to the glass, it tends to choke off air cards a good bit. Now, if you're going water cooling, not so much a big deal, but if you still have you know, a triple fan card like this, it needs to pull air in. So if it gets really close to that timber glass, can't do that so well. So this actually does set it back in the case a bit further. And then, like I said earlier, it does have this little RGB pin that comes off here. It's a standard three pin. Uh, ARGB header since this uh, little plate here is variable. All right, so let's go over what comes in the box here. Other than the main components, and we've already kind of prepped the case for this and the card ready to go in. Of course, you get your manual here, and it comes with a couple of different mounting options or other brackets. You do have these two little foam pads. Uh, this gives you the option to, if this were just sitting in your case kind of this way. Of course, the riser would be plugged into your motherboard, so it'd be plugged in sitting about like so. And then card's gonna go in here, and it has two little screws that'll help secure the card in place at the top. And like I said, this would be mounted to your PCIe slots. Uh, these little pads would actually just be stuck to the bottom here. So say if I'm sitting low enough to touch your, uh, you know, pretty much to touch the uh, PSU shroud, there of most cases, uh, won't be in my case since there's no PSU shroud at the bottom. But you can mount it like this and have two little pads to kind of provide support. So you'd have one there and say maybe one here to help it, help it rest against the bottom of the case. You can do it like that, or it even has options, depending on the size of your case, to run this little bracket here uh, that has a little rail system right behind little RGB part in the actual PCIe slot. It has a little rail system here that you can use this to then guide this little rail back and forth here. Uh, so you can put a little pad on the bottom of this as well. So that can kind of sit on whatever is below it here and you can adjust this to height. It's going to take a little bit of playing depending on cases because uh, I mean it's going to be a little different for each case out there and each you know graphic card size and everything like that. So you're going to have to kind of play around with that. And of course you can, like I said, flip the orientation of this plate too. All right, well let's dive in into installing it and then we'll see how she performs uh, with some thermal testing, which I do believe it'll go pretty well. My case does have pretty good airflow. Uh, but like I said, I main reason I always avoided the vertical mount on that one while it does look cool on certain cards Like I said, it just gets them too close to that glass. So I'm kind of happy with uh, this style of solution here All right, let's go. Let's go and dive into installing it and then we'll jump into some thermal testing So we got everything installed and looking pretty good I'll take a look here 
That's it. It is kind of sitting back a little bit of an angle. I think it's mainly because where my cables are touching here, so I gotta kind of run those better. Now I will say, uh, I might bring in a breaking little bracket over here a little more. Uh, it is causing the car to kind of bend it this way a little bit, which you can't really tell from the front too much, but like I said, the, not the thickest metal in the world. The riser itself feels great, um, but like I said, I mean, it's a little bit thinner than I would like, and definitely be careful when putting in your display port back there. There's a little pain to feed that through, but otherwise, like I said, I like the gap that it creates between the two here. Go and bump this up where you guys can see a little better. There we are. Uh, so basically you can see, like I said, there is vertical mounting brackets that come stock with this case, so long as it's two slot. Uh, but like I said, this takes over the regular horizontal slots. So I went ahead and removed all the coverage there just to make it a little easier because I didn't know which one I want to pass the uh, cable through. I could definitely say right angles would be a little easier as far as installing it here. But that's pretty much it. We do have a little bit of glow down here at the base. Went and threw Goku back in there. Uh, but just have it connected back here. I will have to dive into BIOS to change the uh, PCIe setting because like I said, this is only rated for Gen 3, not Gen 4 support, which this is a B550 board. So this board will do uh, Gen 4 just fine, but uh, we'll get some weird booting or booting to wrong resolutions if we don't go in and change that. So we'll probably go ahead and do that and then we'll run some thermal tests and see how it comes out. All right, so we're just gonna run a quick firmware test here on the system. So let's go ahead and see what we can figure out here and see how it performs. So just go ahead and run stress test. I will do 1440 native resolution of this monitor here. So I'm gonna run this guy. See what kind of temps we're getting. I say pretty much have the card set at default curves. That's an overclock supplied or anything like that. So we'll see what it does here. It's a core sitting there. Hmm, should be going a little higher than that. Actually, let me check that real quick. Now, of course, this is a power virus workload. So typically, you won't be experiencing, uh, unless you have some crazy bottleneck going on, you typically won't be experiencing this much. Um, percentage usage at any given time because uh so we're using 97 uh, percent right now so hitting 68 bounces 69 for a sec 69 again nice um <laughs> so it looks like we're gonna kind of level out there like so this car doesn't really tend to go much over 71 at the hottest that i push it and that's after you know doing some crazy rendering or something like that for a long time or all day working on a project or anything that's heavily intensive than say After Effects and after I've been working on it for a long time. Now this case is have really good airflow, so it's gonna all of course depend on the case to case basis, but uh, definitely compared to mounting it in its regular vertical slot that comes stock on the case, this is definitely a lot better than that since that vertical mount that's regular on the side of the case puts it so close to the glass. All right guys, that about wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed the overview and review there. Like I said, you know, perform thermally just fine. Uh, like I said, ease of installation was pretty simple, uh, pretty easy mounting system. A decent amount of options there depending on, you know, what kind of case you have, what kind of card you have. So you definitely have a little bit of flexibility in the mounting on whether you want to put the, uh, the mount in the front or the back uh, to orient the card in different directions or move it in or out of the case a little easier. And then of course on the bottom support there, even though we didn't go with that today, since I have fans sitting at the bottom here, uh, you know, if that was sitting up against regular power supply shroud or something like that, you know, using either of those options would be fine. And we could probably even get away uh, with the little angled one there and maybe rest it against a fan, a little pad on the bottom and it wouldn't even touch the fan. So if it needed some extra support to hold that up, I think that should be fine. But I didn't really notice any sag or anything like that when installing mine. So. That wasn't really an issue there. Like I said, I definitely prefer, if I'm gonna go with a vertical mount, that it, like I said earlier, be further back in the case like that. So, like I said, it definitely makes it easier to perform thermally, not having those fans right up against the glass. So, definitely way better than uh, the stock one that comes on this case. While I do love the case, that was my biggest critique on it uh, when we first picked it up. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that today. Thank you all again for voting on the uh, Instagram. Like I said, we had a poll over at Desktops Gaming. We had a story go up about this. And then another product we just got in that we're taking a look at right now too. It's actually a pretty cool headset here from Edifier, their new GX. Like I said, these uh, new gaming headset, little extended mic and everything. It's got some active noise cancellation. Works pretty well. Like I said, so we'll be doing a review 
on these pretty soon, but we did a poll over on our Instagram. Uh, like I said, for which one of you guys wanted to see first? Like I said, the GPU bracket won out by a little bit. That just means that the headset will be next. So if you guys want to see some more up close shots of uh, the vertical GPU bracket, and I believe we already have some shots up of the headset, definitely head over to Instagram, check that out. I can appreciate you all for voting and let me know what you want to see first. Like I said, I plan to do that on a lot of products coming up. Like I said, so I believe the, like I said, the headset will be next. We'll be working on a review of those and kind of generally how they sound, how they perform, uh, especially considering they were upgrade to our last ahead of our headset we got in. So that'll be interesting to kind of pair the two together and give you my opinion on those best I possibly can. But overall, you know, spoiler alert, they do sound pretty good and a lot better than the uh, original models we had so definitely looking forward to that but again appreciate you guys for stopping by and checking out the vertical gpu mount let me know if you you know in the comments down below if you have a vertical mount in your case or you use a different brand vertical mount like this there's a few out there uh, that do work pretty well like i said i haven't seen many move to gen 4 yet that'll be definitely nice i'll definitely be reaching back out to easy dli to see if they have a gen 4 option available soon because i like the overall look of it I uh, just wish it was Gen 4. Um, like I said, of course, for graphics cards, not really taking advantage of any kind of speed increase or anything like that, but just to say, you know, kind of future proof, even though I hate that term, but, you know, kind of stay ahead on, you know, matching the motherboards and everything, especially now since Intel also supports Gen 4. But enough of me rambling. Again, appreciate you guys stopping by. Definitely check out the Instagram if you want to vote on our next uh, you know, product we're going to take a look at. We have that headset and a couple coolers coming up next. But again, thank you guys for stopping by. Take it easy.